Today's first reading comes from Mark chapter 1, verse 35. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place. And there he prayed. And Matthew chapter 6. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received the reward. But when you pray, go to your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise Amen. 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 <coughs> Prayer. Prayer. Sometimes we don't even know what to pray for. I put the, the poor little kids on the spot and said, what should we pray for? And I know even adults can't pray. In, in Bible study, that, that's the, the toughest thing to do. And pray us in. Nobody wants to pray. Pray us out. Nobody wants to pray. We forget that prayer is a gift from God. We don't want to pray because we, we figure, I don't know how to pray. He's better at it. Let him do it. She can do a better job. Let her pray. But they can't pray our prayers. They don't know what's stuck right here in us. We can only pray our prayers. It's, it's a gift from God that God expects us to use. <coughs> he knows what we need. He wants to hear it anyway. In today's readings, we see Jesus not only being a, not only giving us great instructions how to pray, but being a great example. He got up early in the morning while it was still dark, and he went away from everybody else, and he prayed. Did you ever do that? Did you ever set your alarm to, to wake yourself up before you knew anyone else could be up? And just spend some time, just open up scriptures and just start praying. It's cool. So just imagine what the things that Jesus prayed for when he went out there and prayed. Jesus made prayer his first priority all the time. First thing in the morning before everybody got up, before a meal, after a meal, before a miracle, after a miracle, all the time. As we heard in Bible study today, he sought God's face always. Always. Through, through prayer, we can do so much. We can confess to God. We can be honest with God. We can ask Him to heal us. We can ask Him to remove all the prejudice from us. We can ask Him to, to not let us do that one thing ever again. We can do so much. The one thing we need to remember to do is we need to ask, Lord, what is your will for me? We always ask for a lot of things for us, but we so how often do we ask, Lord, what is your will? What do you want me to do? Or we may not even pray. Sometimes we don't pray because maybe we don't know what we want to say, but sometimes we don't pray because we just don't do it. We don't think of it. And if we 
don't pray, what are we waiting for? In that, in that hymn we sang today, you know, as, as I was writing the sermon for this week, I said, oh, I like that hymn. Christy says, why don't we just sing it? It's like, duh, yeah, why don't we just sing it? <laughs> so I asked, I called up Dick, actually, I Facebook messaged him, and I asked Kathy, can we sing this hymn? He says, yeah, sure. So we, we see these words, and we forget when we, when we don't pray. What a privilege. What a privilege. It is to carry everything to God in prayer. We can take everything to God. Everything that's on our hearts, everything we're worried about, we can take it all to Him. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Yeah. We'd rather hold on to all our worries and all our hurt because, well, nobody cares. Or I can get through this myself. We forfeit that peace. What needless pain we bear, all because we don't carry everything to God in prayer. It's all right there. Every reason we have to pray is right there. Well, almost every reason. But a good start. If we would only listen to those words. Who wouldn't want to exercise that privilege? <laughs> Me for one. Back in the day when I thought that I was responsible for everything, I never prayed because all I had to do was work harder and work longer. And things would work, right? Yeah, they work until they don't. You know, right? You work hard and you work longer hours, but sooner or later it doesn't work. Or we can ask God, which way should I go? When we don't even know which way we can go. When we finally realize that the words of James that, that every good thing comes from God, we realize we really need to start praying. No matter how hard we work, who gave us the ability to work? God. Who gave us the talents that got us that job? God, we play a very small role in doing anything. So why don't we just pray about it? Why don't we ask God for the direction, the guidance, the strength, whatever it takes to get the job done? And, and then give thanks and praise to God when it happens. Because He always answers our prayers. And we don't pray to God because He doesn't know what we need. Because God knows everything for all time from start to finish right now. So He doesn't need to know that we, that we need another job to get the rent paid. He already knows that. But He wants us to ask Him because when we do get that new job, we can go, thank you, Lord. And we can realize that we only got it from Him. Your Father knows what you need before you even ask. Jesus told us that in Matthew. God wants us to pray to Him as an expression of our trust in Him. Because when we go to Him and know He's going to give to us, that's trust. There we go. We go to God believing that He's going to answer our prayer. Jesus said, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. We go to God not saying, okay, Lord, maybe if you could do this thing for me, it'd be really great. You go to God knowing that he's going to answer your prayer. Because we have that confidence in him. John tells us in 1 John, he says, and this is the confidence that we have toward Him. That if we ask anything, now listen to this, according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we've asked of Him. That's sometimes the thing we miss. 
if we ask anything according to his will, he answers us. See, God's not a magic genie where we can ask for anything. We don't grab our cross and rub it and say, Lord, I need a new car. You know, the prophet Janis Joplin, she prayed, Lord, won't you send me a Mercedes Benz? <laughs> All my friends have these Porsches. I do make amends. Sorry for the scene. <laughs> we don't do that. Because it's not according to God that we're going to get a Mercedes Benz. You don't pray to God and say, Lord, let me, have, let me win the lotto. Nope. Because the lottery is built on the backs of other people. And that's why it's no good. You've got to pray to things that are according to God's will. And when he answers those prayers, we've got to do something else. We have to tell people about it. Because what good is receiving this blessing from God if we don't testify to His glory and greatness that He did this, right? Amen. Why let a perfectly good miracle go to waste? How many of us here told people about the Christmas miracle? Remember that? 5 o'clock worship or 7 o'clock worship? I get confused. Early worship, <laughs> Josh Christopherson comes in and says, I need prayers. My brother, his wife's going to have a baby, but the baby's stuck in the birth canal. We don't know if the baby's going to live. We don't know if the baby's born, what's going to happen. It might, might have birth defects, we just don't know. So we pray. Later worship, what happens? Baby's born healthy. Baby's going home the next day. That's a miracle. But if we don't tell other people about it, it goes to waste. And what God has done, we let just fall by the side. When we need to testify that here's the glory of God, here's what He did today. That's what we need to do. Prayer is effective. It works. When we pray to God, God always answers our prayers. We hear in Luke. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. The Bible gives us a ton of examples of this happening. In Exodus God was ready to wipe out the Israelites for one of their continued sins. You know, sin, confess, repent, repeat. They had that down. Almost like you guys who wash your hair, you know, wash, rinse, repeat, and all that. They did it with sin. So anyway, Moses says, turn from your fierce anger, relent, and do not bring disaster on your people. And God says, okay. Even, even though God knew they were going to do it again. But he gives us all these chances. Moses asked for, for mercy for the Israelites. And we can ask for it too. In John chapter 1 verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and pur purify us from all unrighteousness. All we have to do is ask. That, that thing that, that we try to stop and we can't, ask God to help you. Because willpower doesn't do it. We can't get it done with willpower. Sometimes God hasn't answered our prayer, though, the way that we think He will, or, or actually, the way that we want Him to. One of my favorite books is The Battle Plan for Prayer. It's from the two guys, the Kendrick brothers, who did The War Room, and they, do a, they direct a bunch of other Christian movies. So Battle Plan for, Plan for Prayer, it's a great book for a book study. If anybody wants to start a, a book study about that one, Deb, um, <laughs> Bad plan for prayer, Stephen, Alan, Kendrick. So they identified five different ways that God answers prayers. And Rich talked about it. This came from another pastor also. And sometimes God says, when, when we pray for something directly in line with his will, he answers it like that. 
The example I have for that is, you heard this before, when I wasn't getting preaching practice, I was walking with Razzle and said, Lord, I need preaching practice. I got home and there's an email immediately because God knew I needed practice. So he answered that, that prayer immediately. When we ask for things that are in accordance with Jesus' will and nature and God's will and nature, it happens fast. Sometimes he says yes, but not yet. We're just not ready for it. Maybe we're not ready for that job. Maybe we're not ready for this one thing. Maybe we're not ready for that door to be open. God knows that. He says, hold on. He doesn't tell us, hold on, but <laughs> maybe a couple months, maybe a couple years down the road, we look backwards and we say, oh yeah. That's how he answered the prayer. God might, might answer yes if there's a lesson to be learned. He knows it's not good for us, but he lets it happen anyway because we can learn from this. As parents, we do this for our kids. You can't bail them out every time they're in trouble. So sometimes let them make a mistake. God does that too. Sometimes we ask for things that are not good for us. And God just says, no, you cannot have that. I won't let you. And other times God says, i got a better plan. Hold on. I don't know how many times I've prayed for something and that door slammed shut and he just said, try this door. And his door was better. Should we get upset with God when he doesn't answer our prayers the way we think he should? What do you think? No. Why not? He didn't give me what I wanted. <laughs> how many times have your parents seen that? <laughs> We should always be content with God's answers because, like I said before, God knows from start, middle to finish, what's the best path. So just be obedient and submit to his wisdom and say, okay, I get it. We have examples in the Bible, of course, when, when people ask for things and they didn't get it. Think of Jesus on the mount on, on Holy Thursday. He said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Jesus knew what he was in for. The beatings, the suffering, the crucifixion. He knew what was headed his way. But he also knew what was on the other side. He knew that he had to die so that we could be saved. He knew he was going to sit at the right hand of the Father. So... He finished his prayer with, not my will, but yours be done. Paul said, three times I pleaded with the Lord, get rid of this thorn. God said, no. God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Sometimes God makes us go through the worst things. Because when he does lift us up, that's proof that he's God. Should we even be able to pray directly to God? He is, he's so magnificent. He's holy. He's in heaven. Why do we get to pray to God? Should we even be able to? What do you think? Should we? Huh. Because Jesus died, the curtain was torn, and we had access to God, the Father. We, we hear that we should pray in Jesus' name. Uh, we hear in 1 Timothy, Paul tells us that there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the Christ Jesus. Until Jesus died, we didn't have that access. We had to have a, a priest go in to the Holy of Holies and they had to tie a rope on that guy in case he did something wrong so they could drag him out. So in Bible study, I wondered, should I be up here on a platform with a rope on? <laughs> in case you guys have to drag me off? <laughs> Could happen. That's when I found out that there's a trap door somewhere around here. Just in case. Jesus tells us, no one comes to the Father except through me. That's how we have access to God. Because through Jesus' sacrifice, 
we can go to the Father and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Can we pray for anything in the name of Jesus? Can we go back to Janis Joplin's prayer and ask for that Mercedes Benz in the name of Jesus? No. 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 Same thing. We hear in 1 John, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. Who believe in the name of the Son of God. So that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Does God answer the prayer of sinners, you think? If anybody can go up there? <coughs> People that, that don't even believe in God, who, who reject Him, you think God answers their prayers? I see a couple of nods. God does what He wants. Because if God didn't answer our prayers, we wouldn't be here, right? Think of Adam and Eve in Genesis. Once they finally sinned and realized that they were naked, God clothed them. King Hezekiah, he was praying for, for a cure. And probably the best example is the, the, the criminal who was on the cross on the side of Jesus. He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He had no right to ask for that. He was a criminal. He was getting crucified. And Jesus said, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It's a beautiful reply that a sinner could ask Jesus to bring him home. And Jesus immediately, without hesitation, said, you're going to be there with me. The last three things we need to consider are, is there, is there anything that would slow down our prayers to God? What could be the things that, that would maybe cause God to say, come back later? <coughs> We hear in Psalm 66, If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. If we love sin more than we love God, He might put us off. Rightly so. We don't need to be completely free of sin, but we can't be so in love with sin that we put it in front of God. Because God wants to be first. Rightly so. He's given us everything. If we're praying for something that would harm others, God's not going to let it happen. He's going to stop that prayer. Proverbs tells us, The Lord is far from the wicked, but He hears the prayer of the righteous. And finally, if not only if we have a grudge against somebody, but if somebody has something against us, we need to be the peacemaker. We need to go to them and say, even if we're not in the wrong, we need to go to them and say, forgive me. Jesus tells us in Matthew 5, Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, and then come give your gift. So with this great gift of prayer, what stops us? Why don't we pray at every opportunity? What are we waiting for? When, when the question to pray, or if somebody asks you to pray for them, or if somebody just mentions something that they need prayer for, let's just pray. Because all we have to do is remember the words of the hymn, and that should be enough. Because that hymn tells us what a privilege we forfeit when we don't take everything to the Lord in prayer. Amen? Now let's, let's offer up our prayers because if we're not sinners now, we were at one time, 